and welcome to chapter 5. Uh, once again, this is a sculpty paint tutorial, and uh, we have been going through this page by page, and for the last two chapters we've been stuck on the stone tool. One of the more complicated, and frankly one of my favorite tools. Uh, let's pick up where we left off. We just finished talking about bend, and as I pointed out, you can really only appreciate how bend works when it's not a sphere. It's very useful for getting all the sculpts over, or all the vertices over to one side, so you can make a highly detailed thing over here with no poles. But other than that, it's uh, well. Let me show. On a sphere, it's it's pretty much useless. If we were to go to a cube, for example, and uh, let me just tap this in a little bit. Okay, and we were to rotate or bend, not rotate, bend around the x axis or the let's do the y axis, it's a little skinnier looking. You can sort of see that some weird bending around the y axis goes on, and it's never exactly how you expect it's going to be. Um, if we were to bend that back, which you can do, which is really cool, um, you could then bend on the x-axis. You can sort of get an idea of how this tool can have some uses in terms of making odd shapes. Uh, very useful if you're gonna make rocks. Uh, you want some sort of shardy base that you can then, you know, turn into an actual stone of some kind. Because when we go over here to the solid mode, you can see that that quickly becomes a great deal more organic. Anyway, let's move back on to the uh, next part, which is probably the... Uh, honestly, probably the more important parts of this tool. Um, these three smooths... This smooth allows you to smooth the torus, which allows you to take a sphere, and because of our angle we can't really see what's going on, but it allows you to start pinching a hole in the middle. Uh, very useful. In this will s smooth it back to a sphere. Smoothing it back to a torus, smoothing it back to a sphere, back to a torus, back to a sphere, like so. Um, and you can create a pseudo-torus, um, or you can smooth to a plane. Now, the cool thing about smoothing to a plane is that you can actually, with some effort, because a plane is missing one of the vertices, one of the rows of vertices, it creates this flat spot on one side. And uh, as you sit there and smooth it out, this actually fills back in with vertices, but uh, if you were to smooth it to plane, let me go ahead and turn on the uh, texture mode here, you can see that that's all stretched out on one side. Very handy if you wanted to do something like, say, moving all the sculpts, all the vertices to one side of the sphere again. See? Okay, makes it very handy to get rid of a lot of that extra detail that you don't need bunched up in that hole to have available for making your relatively pinchless sculpt. This is handy if you're doing um, uh, organic shapes or um, shapes that have to be seamless and can't have pinch holes, you know, the thing on the ends um, that come in when you do uh, non-lossless sculpts. Uh, if you're doing something that's organic, you really shouldn't be using lossless sculpts anyway. Uh, you're just being mean to everybody around you for no good reason at all, since if it's organic, it doesn't need to be exactly perfect. Um, back to Sphere. Um, let's talk about these here. 4, 16, 8, 6, 4, and 3 and then Force 33 hard and smooth. Force 16, that isn't the uh, same as doing this down here to 16. That's actually now a 16 vertices sculpt. Uh, this would be a 16 by 17, technically. Um, but if we were to smooth this, you'll see that the uh, sections start coming out of those folded areas. This is, in fact, a um, faceted sculpt. 
Uh, let's go back to the uh, sphere for a second, because uh, we get weird artifacts if we jump through all these at once. This, of course, is an 8x8 eight eight version of the same sphere. Uh, here is a 6x6. Six six. Uh, that can be handy. Um, again, if you need shapes like this, this is a great way to get them. Uh, they're not... they don't seem to be super mathematically perfect, obviously, but they're pretty cool, and they're pretty close. In some cases, depends on your needs. Always depends on your needs. This is a program for certain kinds of things. Now here's a four. That would be a square-shaped sculpt with, uh, oh, I don't know how many. Looks like eight. So it looks like it's really four by eight, not four by four. Um, back to the sphere. Here's three by three, which looks more like three by six to me. And, uh, Let's go back to Sphere, and let's find out what these two do. Uh, force 33 times smooth. Um, well, that's intriguing looking. Um, is that the same as that one? Looks like it probably is. Yeah, that looks like it's just uh, jamming the 16 by 16 down, or the 64 by 64 down to a 32 by 32. Just handy to have, and hard and smooth. I have no idea what those are for. Um, but, whatever. Um, looks like it also does some maximizing. So, uh, let's see if we maximize this, what happens? Yeah, okay. So this looks like this might actually be the better tool to use for uh, doing your um, maximizing and getting your, you know, your best bang for the buck without any extra um, artifacting that you would get doing this. Um, let me go ahead and put that in 64 by 64. Yeah, you see that get nice wrinkle there. Um, I'll bet we don't get that when we do smooth. Eh, it looks like we do. I have no idea. But it's definitely going from 64 by 64 here to 30. So that seems to be like your what you're actually getting kind of message there. Um, Let's go ahead, and it looks like we got about three minutes left on this chapter. Let's talk about the stairs tool. Uh, stairs tool, remarkably tiny. Um, reset to stairs cube. Here is a stairs cube. Now what, you might ask, is a stairs cube? Well, it's, it's a cube. I'm going to go ahead and resize that so we can see it. Oh, it doesn't look like we can. That, that's unfortunate. Alright, what is a stairs cube? Well, if you create, let's see, 5, 7, or 15 stairs, let's say 5, and I'm going to decrease stairs. See what's happening here? We're actually creating a staircase out of this box. And what this is allowing us to do is to create those wonderful sculpted staircases that everybody loves so much without any major effort on our part. Look at that. Okay, let me go ahead and put it back into a cube, and now let's try 15. And if we increase the stairs, or decrease the stairs, looks like it just goes one way or the other, we can create 15 steps on a single param. That's pretty cool. I don't like them, because I think that's a waste of, uh, well, I don't think it's a waste, I think it's uh, using the wrong tool for the job, but uh, if you do it right, particularly if you use like the 7, um, you can get some pretty decent results out of out of sculpted stairs. I've seen good results. Um, I still think that you're better off doing it by hand with regular prims, but if you want to do it, um, here's a way. Here's a really easy way to do it, and you can do 5, 7, or 15. Um, just to just to play with this because we've just got a couple of seconds left. Uh, I want to see what happens if we smooth that out. Now you can see I just did one tap and we've already got this weird sort of shape here. Let's see what happens if we tap it a few times. Ooh, we get a we get a slanted prim out of that. That's pretty cool. Ooh, oh, that, that's that is neat. That's kind of neat sort of warping going on there. Let's see what the texture looks like there. Oh, let's see it's a point on this side, because when we do the, uh, yeah. Alright, on to chapter 6, I guess.